Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Bluebird, and here is her story. Hello, Ollie. Thank you for the last video. I'm getting more insight. I realize I'm giving too much credit to those who don't deserve it. I never wanted to believe people could be so heartless. This post focuses on critically analyzing my father. I think he was a covert narc. I think my mother is as well because they were so good at convincing us kids and the outside world that they were martyrs. My mother was the benevolent sacrificing mother and my father was the man of God who was also a peacekeeper amongst his own brothers. After he died, things seemed to fall apart. <clears throat> his death was sudden, quick and unexpected. He was driving home from work and had an accident on the freeway. His car went over the overpass and he died instantly. My family never gave me the details of his death. There possibly was another car involved. When he died, we took him to his village in Nigeria. The burial was traumatizing. So much fighting and chaos. They blamed my mother for his death. This is not uncommon in LGBO. It's pronounced Ebo <clears throat> culture. When the husband dies, the brothers feel entitled to all his wealth. They often seize the properties and kick the wife and kids out if they can. Uh, Nigeria. Awesome. If the wife dies before the husband, it is fate. Mm, that's very Me Too-ish. It's very feminist. But if the husband dies first, then the woman must have had an evil hand in it. My dad's brothers turned on my mother like this was the day they had been waiting for and they also turned on her sons like beasts because it's about money it's all about the money my brothers were tall and big so they managed to protect my mother i was terrified as the drama kept coming from all angles i never suspected my uncles hated my mother until one day when i was a small child and my uncle called our house phone. I picked up the phone downstairs. My mother picked up the phone in her bedroom. My mother said hello. My uncle said he wanted to talk to my father. My mother asked him in a mean tone, why are you calling here? He said something along the lines of, fuck off, bitch. He said it too calmly like he had said it before. He did not seem surprised or shocked. He had said that. She did not seem surprised or shocked. He had said that to her. I hung up the phone. I was scared and stunned. Told my golden child brother what happened. He accused me of lying. So I dropped it. You know. <clears throat> this could be a combination of just the culture you come from. Whether they're trying to alienate your mother. But this sounds deeper. This sounds like. This reminds me. When, when I was a kid. And my aunt Lita was just before she had went no contact. Now, Lita was my father's um, second second sister. Adrian's the oldest sister. Lita was the second sister. Second fiddle to Adrian. That narc, just like Kenny, was the second brother, second fiddle to my father, the narc. And Lita's the one who my father forced to stay in a marriage she didn't want to be in, threatened her to, to, to kick her out of the family. Well, you know, what I later came to find out is, you know, Lita went no contact. And after learning about narcissism, I figured out what it was. And when she had done it, right before she had done it, the phone rings in the house. And I'm in the back family room. And there was a phone behind me. And I reached back. And I pick it up. Hello? It's Lita. And she just says, put your fucking cunt of a mother on the phone. I'm like, oh, nice. Somebody get a yell at, somebody get a yell at drunk and let me get her right on the fucking phone for you. Yo, ma, pick up. It's Adrian. It's, uh, it's Lita. I never hang up. Lita's like, you fucking dirty bitch. You stay away from me. You stay away from my family. You and that asshole fucking my asshole brother of yours. You know, Anna just ripped her. Just ripped her. Let her know everything she thought of her. And then went no contact. And then from that moment on, Lita was insane. Crazy. Years after my father's death, death my mother and brothers 
now hate my father's brothers and their children with a passion. They have held this grudge since my father's death. They said after his death, my uncle sued my mother to pay for the funeral expenses and tried to get our family kicked out on the street. My uncles have apologized for their behavior in recent years and have been trying to make peace. My mother and brothers do not want to, but still go to all the events to brag and show off. They love having me there. Smiling and showing how good and successful they are. But... The second we get home, they all remark about how jealous my relatives are and how they are garbage people. I got sick of hearing this. I kept asking them all, why do we all go to these Nigerian events if you guys can't stand these people and you don't want to bury the hatchet? I'm always met with crickets. They love being victims. Yeah, they love being victims. Cultures like yours and cultures like what Charlene comes from, it's all about the victim. It's all about being a victim. All of it. The victimization hides the evil of the narcissist. Their fake victimization is their weapon for them to perpetuate their evil on everybody. On everybody. Years after my father's death, my mother now and brothers now hate my father's brothers and their children with a passion. They have held this grudge since my father's death. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I already read that one. Back to my father. My parents abused us. They accused us kids of being ungrateful for their sacrifices and their goodness. They always positioned themselves as victims. How could I accuse a working mother and a man of God? My father was not all bad. I have moments with him which I felt he loved me and he cared and he cared. But there are these glaring memories in my mind that I have been repressing and rationalizing for years. My parents were really devious in hiding the abuse. They would gush about how much they sacrificed for us children. So much so I felt like a burden and did my best to be independent even as a child. I think my brothers were the same. I'm starting to think the reason why I never got pregnant is because of the trauma of losing baby Ty and the fear of being shackled with the responsibility of having children I could not support. All my brothers are single as well and have no children. We're all in our 30s. I have been working towards being financially independent because that is all my parents ever talked about or fought about. I love kids and want to be a mother one day, but the fear of failing them is so strong. Uh-oh. This might be, that's maintenance to fix the thermostat. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I had to have the thermostat replaced. I couldn't, couldn't turn it up. It was stuck at 72. It sucked. Okay, let's see where we are. Everything needs to be order in my mind. I must have an adequate safety parachute in case of a catastrophe. My mind is always in survival mode. I always have a plan, A, B, C, D, and E. I always think in worst case scenarios. I always plan for the worst. Most of the time, plan A works. But I can't help but worry disaster will strike. I'm a worrier and I have anxiety. I've tried so many supplements, teas, and vitamins to deal with my anxiety, depression, and racing mind. I would describe myself as, a, as scatterbrained. I never tried street drugs. I wanted to try marijuana, but as a nurse, it is frowned upon. And if I'm found to have a positive THC test, I could lose my job, so I don't use it. So I continued my search online for healthy supplements instead. My head was always in the clouds as a child. My search for well-being led me to self-diagnosing myself with ADD. Not a good idea. I was convinced I had this diagnosis. My mind wanders and races nonstop. You know, part of the problem is, is you're not, Bluebird, is you're not living your own life at all. You're living your mother's life, you and your brothers. Your mother's a nurse, you're a nurse, they're pharmacists, everything's around pharmaceuticals.
it's hard for me to concentrate when having conversations and studying. In 2015, I went to a psychiatrist. She diagnosed me with generalized anxiety disorder, not ADD. She just prescribed Wellbutrin. Oh, God, that's a bad one. I know that's a bad one. I told my brother, my mother and brother, the pharmacist, about going to the doctor in my new prescription. My mother was horrified that I went. She told me not to take the meds and call the doctor's office and have them remove the anxiety diagnosis from my medical records. She told me the anxiety diagnosis would affect my future insurance rates or ability to get coverage. But what is the point of having insurance if I can't use it? She's more concerned with hiding the diagnosis that helping me that than helping me get better. That's 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 not what she's doing. She doesn't want you going to a psychiatrist because the psychiatrist is going to tell you the root of all your problems are her. That's what she's trying to protect. She offered no suggestions or help for how I might deal with the anxiety. I took the meds for a week. I did not like them, and they did not seem to help my anxiety, so I stopped taking them. During this time, I was very well enmeshed with my family and had a new stressful nursing job. I did not notice the patterns of anxiety with my family dynamics. I was, so de <clears throat> I was desperate for solutions, but I got none. So I coped with binge eating and bulimia. The food helped suppress the uncomfortable feelings. It was a double-edged sword. It helped suppress the emotions, but my body was wasting away. Interesting note, after hitting rock bottom in 2016, I kept to myself and lived as a hermit in my room. I was overweight. I lived as a sloth for some weeks, trying to put my broken self back together with sitcom and sugar binges. I eventually dusted myself off and hit the gym. I signed up for hot yoga and started going every day. I started to eat healthy and meditate. I kept away from my family. In a span of six months, I lost a lot of weight and my mind became so quiet. I was amazed how quiet my mind became. The racing thoughts went away as well as the anxiety. My anxiety got better <clears throat> when I detached from my family and started doing yoga daily. I started to realize slowly that my racing thoughts, worries, and anxiety were related to my relationships with my family. When I was away from them, I ate healthy, lost weight, episodes of bulimia were minimal, and my anxiety was not so bad. Back to my father, I always sensed my mother never really cared for me. But I felt like my father was good. I would often follow him like a little duck when he came back from work. He would get annoyed because he sometimes didn't realize... I was following him and would bump into me. Looking back at my little self, I feel bad for the child. Love was so scarce in that house, even a little crumb was enough for me to suffice to sacrifice myself for what I felt like felt like love. I did not know what love is. My father was on a pedestal in my mind. He was the good one. How could a man who loved God and prayed so much be bad? He went to church at least three times a week, helped with the mass, and traveled on pilgrimage pilgrimages to holy sites I could judge a man how could I judge a man who could have been a priest he even wanted my second eldest brother to become a priest he literally wanted to give one of his sons to the church my brother was an altar boy for some years but left after my father died after hitting rock bottoms my hands were marked rot, rot, after hitting rock bottom, my hands were marked, stained in crime. They showed my criminal status. But it seemed so cruel and unfair that I was the only one sitting alone in the cold facing judgment when my intentions were pure. But my intentions became twisted and sick in the eyes of the family. I took the bait and turned into a monster, like a bird in a cage too small for far too long. I snapped. I went off and became like my abusers. Karma met me quickly and I found myself I swiftly found myself in a dangerous situation. My life flashed before my eyes. At that point I decided maybe life was not worth living and fuck it all. I just wanted to end. The unfairness of my life falling apart seemed so unjust. Why me? But I must have deserved it because here I am. 
I have always tried to be fair when dealing with my family. When analyzing them and the roles we all played in the dysfunctional dynamic, I was always so reluctant to look at my father. He was a man of God who, was, who aimed to do God's work. But the more I dug into my family dynamic, it just seemed unfair to blame my mother only for the abuse. She was married to the woman. He was married to the woman for several years, went along with the marriage visa scam. He watched as my mother tortured me. He was there when she was abusing us. The fact that he was there and let it happen proves guilt. He deserved to be judged like the rest of us in our mind, in my mind. That logic slightly opened the door to looking at my father's role in the abuse. I will break down his abuse and the incidents I remember. You're always going to find out, you know, you, you usually find out the person you thought was the enabler or the good one was the one pulling the strings the entire time. Putting the fear of God in me. <clears throat> I grew up Catholic. My dad would often make us read the Bible with him. As a young child, I was maybe maybe I was five or six. I was terrified of the stories in the Bible, as you should be. As you should be. The Bible, especially the Old Testament, is a horrible, horribly violent book that just talks about punishment, fire, and brimstone. That's why narcs like it. It gives them power. He would often make us watch religious movies like The Ten Commandments. As a kid, all the religious teachings about angels appearing, bread turning into blood, bleeding from the hands, and saint stories terrified me. I had nightmares almost on a daily basis when I was in first or second grade. I would pray to God that a saint or angel would not appear to me. I was so scared I would keep my eyes open in the dark, darkness watching, hoping they would not come. My dad would take me to church with him to night mass. <clears throat> Going to church at night was scary. The archaic designs and dark corners scared me a lot. He was teaching me to be God-fearing and obedient, but that stuff was too intense for a small child to comprehend or deal with. I think my father in some way wanted to save us all, save our souls. In his paranoia, he seemed to have good intentions, but still, what the fuck? Here's what I'm going to say to you. You may have been very fortunate of your father dying when he did. Your father wasn't trying to save anybody. Your father wasn't. All he was trying to do was project, project power through religion. One trying to save jack shit. He had plenty of opportunities to save you, didn't he? Didn't he? He didn't need to use some flying spaghetti monster magic book to do it. He didn't need the religion to do it. No, the religion is a shield, is a mask. Because the things the narc could have saved you from were right in front of his face. They were apparent. They were happening. They were real. And he chose to ignore them. He didn't need that book. That book is bullshit as far as he's concerned. As far as it's concerning him, that book is nothing more than a shield. A shield that masks, that, that blocks him from having the res face responsibility of doing the responsibility of doing nothing. Blueberry muffins. Coming from a polygamous family, my father was paranoid. He worried people would try to poison him and his family. He would often have our house blessed by priests. He would sprinkle holy water on us when we slept and would tell us never to accept food from strangers or at times his own brothers. When I was around three or four years old, one of our neighbors brought over muffins. My parents were not home. My eldest brother offered me some of the muffins and we ate them. When my father got home, he found out we ate the muffins, so he was mad. He beat me and my eldest brother really bad. He beat us over eating muffins. We're small children. Yeah, because in his mind, and I know in that culture, in a Nigerian culture, the father gets first of everything. And they're always looking for a reason to beat you. Always. Narcissists in general, but especially in Europe, it's, it's particularly cruel.
bill collectors. When I was around eight years old, bill collectors were calling from my parents. My dad was home. He did not want to answer the phone. They kept on calling. He had me answer the phone and tell the man on the phone that he was not home. I told the man on the phone that my dad was not at home. The man told me I was lying, but I kept silent, not knowing what to say. This was very confusing for me because he was having me lie. What the fuck? But he always judged me harshly. Right. Had you lie to bill collectors, you spent money you couldn't pay back, duck the bill collectors. But he's a man of God, right? Right? Sprinkling holy water? Right. Right. The hypo their hypocrisy knows no bounds. He would judge his children harshly for our mistakes, but he was teaching me, but he was teaching me to lie. Blame shifting. After the sexual abuse, he blamed me and judged me as being bad. He beat an eight-year-old child without mercy. He was not present as a father. If he was more present in our lives and not just in the background, I think the molestation would not have happened. Also, buying adult magazines for my brother was a bad idea. Again, this is another man of God. It's another man of God. He never took responsibility for the role he played in the sexual abuse happening. I think he blamed me for it happening. In future years, he would tell me not to stay downstairs with my brothers and their friends at night. My brothers and their friends watched movies, played video games, and had fun. I wanted to be there and hang. I always... I was always left out because I was the girl. They sometimes let would let me stay to watch with them. One night he came home and found me downstairs with my brothers and their friends watching a movie. He dragged me upstairs beating me because he told me not to stay downstairs with the boys at night. Epiphany just came to me as I was writing. I wonder if he knew my brother's friend was molesting me. Duh. As I keep telling you, the narcissist didn't need or doesn't need religion to protect you. He's had every opportunity and he fails every time. And it's clear he knew about it. He knew about it. He just blames you and beats you for his own mistakes, for his own shortcomings. This is why he was so harsh on me later. My brother's friend stopped coming to our house after the incident. I'm not sure if my brother stopped inviting him over or if my parents got involved. I could not understand why he beat me for simply hanging out with my brothers and their friends in our family living room. Right. Because it's not about, it's about protecting his lie. That's why. It's about conditioning you to accept that it's always your fault. That's why. Mind games. I remember at a family get-together at our house, my dad was drinking a beer. I was a young child. He did not drink a lot. He usually had one or a half a bottle of beer because it made him sleepy. My dad called me over there to where he was sitting. He asked me if I wanted to drink some, some of the beer. I told him, okay. I was happy that my dad wanted to let me drink. I told He told me to grab a cup from the cupboard. I went to get my cup. As I came back, he began to shame me. He said, if someone offers you, offers you a drink, you will, you will take it. He proceeded to berate me and shame me for being bad. I felt so shamed and sad and deflated. I disappointed him. Up until recently, I thought the incident was all my fault. No, it was just one of the tests that you could never pass. That you could never pass pass looking at it now that is really fucked up he did that he was the one drinking and he proceeds to bait and shame me for wanting to share the moment with him unwarranted beatings my father has punished me for things i did not do i got beatings that i knew i did not deserve as i got older my mother would complain to my father about me constantly i think she may have instigated some of these beatings I wonder if she was jealous of our relationship. She does not talk much about her own father. Of course she is. But any, any reason to get you beaten, I mean, understand something. Your mother and father were codependent on each other. They didn't have to set this up. They knew what the game was. They knew what the game was. This one incident is about my fourth eldest brother, the one who I, who I suspect is now a narc. 
When I was a young child, my brother was a year older than me. My father was teaching my fourth eldest brother and me how to cook. We had to learn to cook at an early age because my parents were never home. I could barely get over the stove and had to climb on chairs to get to the upper cabinets. My dad assigned me a task and had my brother chop the onions. After my brother chopped the onions, he took them to the sink and rinsed them with water. After that, he brought them back to the cutting board. My dad found out he washed the onions. He flew into a rage and started beating my brother so harshly, my brother cried. I was stunned and frozen. Here, Look, and here's the other problem. In that culture, they're just violent. They go violent in a heartbeat. They enjoy beating their children for no fucking reason or any reason. They enjoy it, and then they cover it up. And then they tell you it's your fault. I never forgot that because I always thought my father was a good God-fearing man. How could he beat my brother who was just a child learning how to cook? Over a simple mistake, that was one of the incidents in my mind that made me see my father was not perfect and sin-free. He was always able to rationalize the other incidents of abuse, but never this incident. <clears throat> Posers. My mother and father took me to a car auction. They bought a used BMW, but it was really nice looking. One thing about Nigerians in America that they love to compete with other Nigerians. They brag about their college degrees, the success of their children, and their wealth. A lot of Nigerian American homes, the wives are the breadwinners because most of them are nurses. The majority of the female Nigerian women I know are nurses and run the household because they make the most money. And don't, and let me tell you something, most of these nurses are abusing their patients. That's why they get into it. That's why a lot of nar narcs get into nursing. This often brings conflict because Nigeria is a patriarchal company, country. The power shifts in the US, USA. This brings a lot of conflict and sometimes violence. The Nigerian women work double shifts to get extra money so they can buy expensive laces, cars, and live in nice areas. My parents were no exception. They made sure to buy a home in an expensive area by, the el by my eldest brother when he was the golden child. The latest Air Jordans pay for basketball training, buy him the best clothes. My mother would also buy gold, diamonds, and Gucci purses for herself. She would dress me in fine clothing for Nigerian get-togethers. At school, and at school in Nigerian get-togethers, people thought our family was rich. But yeah, but weren't they also scamming the immigration system, scamming the welfare system at the same time? Isn't that what was going on? They're scammers, okay? Yeah, they care about trinkets and cars and, and monetary things. That's what they care about. That's what they care about. And they'll do anything together to get it. Steal from each other, steal from you, scam the government, welfare fraud, immigration fraud. Don't matter. Rules don't apply to them. You know this. You know this. And you think your father's a God-fearing man? It's a cover for all of this. For all of this. They're just better sophisticated Nigerian prince scammers. If your mother didn't go to nursing school and didn't come to America, they'd be sending emails from Nigeria. That's what they'd be doing. At school and at Nigerian get-togethers, people thought our family was rich. So rich at times we had no food in the house. The lights, heat, or water could get cut off at times. But we were seemingly rich. My eldest brother got spoiled because he was the eldest. And so I did. So did I because I was the only girl. But we were the, fa we were the face of the family. So they had to dress us well. My other brothers got hand-me-downs and whatever was left. So after the auction, we came home. My Aunt Pam called my mother on the phone. I picked up the phone. 
She asked me how I was and what I did that day. I was excited to talk with her. I told her we went to an auction and bought a car. After my mother got off the phone with Aunt Pam, she was livid. Both my parents were. They both cornered me in their bedroom. They towered over me and berated me for telling Aunt Pam they bought a car in an, on an auction. Because they're scamming everybody, their family, they lie to each other. It's so far, like, look, Bluebird, the only thing you can do at this point is to cut it all out and move on with your life. That's it. That's it. It's never going to scam. Never stops. Now everyone would know they got it on an auction. They said I talked too much and I never kept quiet. This yelling session lasted for for lasted for so long I sat and cried as they yelled at me. A couple years ago, recalling that memory, I told my mother that her and my father were really dumb. They did not want people to know that they bought a car on auction. They should have bought a f bought brought a five-year-old. I was excited to see the auction and the children love sharing. How did they expect me to know I should lie? My mother had this strange look on her face and said nothing. I think she was worried. I started, I was starting to remember the abuse that happened when I was a child. I never forgot. I just never talked about it. I'm going to be very honest with you here, Bluebird. Your parents, if I had my way, should have been deported back to Nigeria because because this is the type of shit that kills a culture. It kills a culture. Your lights are being show, shut off. You got bill collectors calling. But it's all about the pomp and the circumstance, right? Right? As they sit here doing welfare fraud, immigration fraud, marriage fraud... It's childlike. Parents like yours prove everything that Che Guevara would say about black people. That they're obsessed. They'll spend all their money on frivolity and luxury and not pay for their basic, their, their basic essentials. That's that's what Che Guevara would say about black people. That's who your parents are. I'm glad you're better than them. Looking at my father critically, he sent so many conflicting messages. I always thought my mother was the root causes of my self-esteem issues, but he was. His abuse hurt me so much deeper than my mother's abuse. I always sensed my mother's cruelness, but my father's abuse was always a punch to the gut. It was so harsh and cruel, it hurt my hurt my soul deep. Yeah, I understand that. That's like when my father did that to me. It was soul crushing. I expected it from 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 my mother because my mother was been has been an a, an overt violent drunk narcissist since I was since I was a child. It was to be expected from her. His judgments made me feel bad and unworthy to the core. His treatment allowed me to accept abuse from men and other people in my life. He was the man who beat me merciless, mercilessly and made me feel like I deserved it. He told me to lie. He put shame onto me. He was the one person I looked up to as a child. I disappointed him, despite him setting me up to fail. This revelation took so many years to uncover. Thanks for reading my post. Bluebird. What you have to understand about your father, Bluebird, is your father didn't need a Bible and he didn't need religion to protect you. He wasn't making you God-fearing. He was making you for try to he was making you believe you're at fault for your own abuse. He had every he had every opportunity to save you. He didn't need religion. He didn't need that Bible. He didn't need that book. He had every opportunity to save you. Religion is just the narcissist's shield. Period. So, 
I hope that helps. Thank you for another contribution and story, Bluebird. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you guys. Without you all, this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.